The Van Halen Theory of Regulatory Compliance. Welcome to another installment of NextReg on Compliance. My name is Mike Moffat. I'm the Director of Communications here at NextReg. Today, actually, we're going to discuss one of my favorite topics, which I call the Van Halen Theory of Regulatory Compliance, or as a subtitle, Why Small Details Matter when we're discussing regulatory compliance. So this applies to a whole uh, range of uh, different regulations. So it's for any situation where you have inspectors who can in inspect a label or an MSDS, but they don't know exactly what's in your product, what the formulation is. They don't have sort of full information, but they can still inspect parts of your label or MSDS. So an example would be uh, Canada's triple CR uh, consumer regulations, but this applies to Europe, uh, the US, other jurisdictions, and it applies to both labels and MSDSs. So this is more of a broad principle than a discussion of any one regulation. I'll discuss this in the context of the Canadian triple CR because it's the regulation I personally deal with the most, but it applies to a whole range of regulations. So the idea is this that you have these inspectors who you know, can look at your label in MSDS and have some power you know, to recall products, um, take products off a shelf and that sort of thing. And you have some regulation that has a whole bunch of specifications for the labeler MSDS. So on the MSDS side, it might be the information that's required, the headings that are required or that sort of thing. And on a label, it may be, you know, it may be you know, size of fonts, size of symbols, colors of symbols, and that sort of thing. So we're often asked at NextReg um, questions like, well, does it really matter if my symbol is 1 64th of an inch too small? Does it really matter um, if my symbol isn't exactly the right shade of orange? You know, who cares? Really, you know, the, the consumer is getting the information they need. So why do I have to bother, um, you know, making sure my symbol is the right shade of orange? Why do I have to bother making sure my uh, font size is 3.2 millimeters instead of 2.9? Basically, why are you guys so picky? Why does this stuff matter? And it turns out it does. It matters a great deal. And to explain it, I like to tell the story of Van Halen and the brown M&Ms. So this is the rock band Van Halen. In their contract, um, they had a clause stating that they were required to have a bowl of M&Ms. So I didn't have a, a bowl in my back room, but I've got this cup of M&Ms. And there were to be no brown M&Ms in the bowl. If, if the rock band Van Halen saw that there were any br brown M&Ms in the bowl, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't go on stage. They'd refuse to participate. So. This is often thought of, oh, well, it's just, you know, a rock band making up some sort of goofy rule, you know, it's just some rock and roll type thing. But there was a very serious reason for this. And the idea was that, you know, Van Halen had very expensive and elaborate lighting setups, stage setups, um, and that kind of thing. And if something was set up incorrectly, there was a real possibility of injury or even worse. So why they put this M&M clause in their contract is to make sure um, that the person setting up the stage paid attention to details and really fully understood the contract. So what this meant was that the rock band Van Halen used these little small unimportant details as a signal to, to, sh um, to see whether or not somebody got the big large details which were often unobservable but to see if they got those big, important details correct. And I think this applies as well to the area of regulatory compliance for consumer chemicals. So take an example. We'll consider two aerosol products. So you have two aerosol products on the shelf, neither one of which um, has a flammability symbol. So these are being labeled as non-flammable aerosols. Now, if I'm an inspector, and I see one label that you know, lacks a flammability symbol, but they've done everything right. The font size is right, the font colors are right, uh, the symbol colors are right, you know, the, the text that needs to be on the back panel is on the back, the text that needs to be on the front is on the front, it's centered when it's supposed to be centered. They got all the little details right. As an inspector, I'm probably going to think, okay, well, these guys clearly know what they're doing. This product must be non-flammable. 
but I see the second product. It doesn't have a flammable symbol on it, but as well, you know, some of the text isn't quite the right size, you know, maybe some of the back panel information is put on the front or, or vice versa. Um, instead of being centered, the, uh, the text is off to the side of it. I'm going to conclude that these guys don't know what they're doing. So maybe um, this product really is flammable, but they haven't labeled it as such because they really don't know what they're doing. So as an inspector, that's the company I'm going to check out first. I'm going to go to that company and start asking for a bunch of data. I, I'm going to want them to prove that they've done the flammability part correctly. Because it's the flammability that I care about. And in Canada, it's one of the, it's probably the major issue, flammable aerosols, which cause products uh, to be recalled. So that's what I really, really care about. But I can't observe that directly. I don't know directly whether or not a product is flammable or not flammable. It's that, as an inspector, I don't have that kind of information my fingertips. But what I can tell is that the symbols are the right size, they're centered when they're supposed to be centered, I can see the front panel, the back panel, I can see whether or not they've done everything else correctly. And I'm going to use that information as a basis to decide which products I'm going to spend the time investigating and which products I'm going to conclude were done correctly. So in regulatory compliance, it's important to remove the brown M&Ms from your label and MSDS. So when we at Nextray come back to you and say, no, you've got to make this symbol a little bit bigger, you, you've got to center this, you've got to make this the correct color, we're not being nitpicky for the sake of being nitpicky. We're trying to help our clients avoid an audit by regulatory authorities. So again, remove the brown M&Ms from your product labels and MSDSs. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, discussion. If you have any questions, please send them my way to info, I-N-F-O, at nextreg.com. Take care. This presentation and all the information contained herein is not intended to replace or be used in place of the judgment of a qualified regulatory compliance professional. The opinions expressed are those of NextReg compliance at the time the presentation was recorded. Regulations and interpretations of regulations can change rapidly, so please consult a qualified regulatory compliance professional before starting any project. This presentation is presented for educational purposes and is therefore supplementary and not to be considered exhaustive. NextReg Compliance, its officers, directors and employees hereby disclaim any and all responsibility for any loss, injury, damage or expense directly or indirectly arising out of or relating to use or reliance on this presentation or the material contained in this presentation.